I am by no means a news channel, but this is just too big to just not talk about. Fernando Alonso, in case you missed it, is going to Renault for 2021. With that comes some good points and some bad points, which of course I am going to gloss over all of them today for you, starting off with the good points. Of course we have the nostalgia of having Fernando Alonso in that Renault car, the team where he did win both of his world championships. That is of course a great thing for the sponsors and Fernando Alonso has his own set of sponsors that will come and now sponsor Renault because he is coming into that Renault team and more sponsors for Renault means more money, means more performance out of the car in theory if they don't just spend all that money on drivers. Another point that I think can't be ignored with this subject is Alonso's speed. Of course, he has proven with Ferrari and McLaren that he is extremely capable at taking a kind of mediocre midfield-ish car, sometimes even lower than that, and he is capable of getting the absolute most out of it and placing it way further up the grid than it should ever be. And of course, with Renault, those two world championships were not going to win themselves. If that's not a proof of a driver's speed, then I don't know what it is. A very bold prediction from me, I know. However, I predict that because of these factors, Fernando Alonso is going to be able to drag this Renault car to a podium next year. And yes, it might be a lucky one. It might be a repeat of Hockenheim in 2019 or Brazil or even Austria, the race that has just happened. But whatever it is, I think Fernando Alonso is going to profit out of it and get that podium. Moving on to some less positive things about Fernando Alonso. Of course, it's hard to look over the fact that over the many years of Fernando Alonso's career, he's proven to us that he's not the most positive character in an F1 team. Take, for example, even in McLaren or Ferrari, he was known not to be the most positive and bright guy, always looking for the best in the situation. He used to be the one who really got angry at his team. And for a team that's underperforming as much as Renault is, I don't think that is going to amount to anything good. And especially when you combine him with Cyril Abitabou, I don't think the atmosphere in that Renault F1 team is going to be a very nice place to be. And I think for that reason, a lot of people who currently work for Renault are probably going to say, actually, I've had enough. This isn't right. And fair enough. Another bad thing about this move, in my opinion, is the Renault Driver Academy that Renault have famously ignored over the years, instead favouring old F1 drivers and just people they've just kind of found, you know? Like, so... From this Renault Driver Academy, we've got such great talent. We've got Guan Yu Zhou, we've got Christian Lungard, we've got Max Futrell, and the list, I think I think it's six drivers in the academy at the moment, and they all have the talent if they are given the right training and all that kind of boring stuff to do with it. They have the talent to drive an F1 car and get good results out of it, but instead Renault have opted to spend all of their money on this one driver who might not even be such a great thing for the team. And while we're talking about money, this money that they're spending on Fernando Alonso, I they haven't actually released how much it actually is, but I would expect it to be a lot because Fernando Alonso doesn't work for nothing. So let's just assume as a rough figure that they're paying Fernando Alonso 20 million pounds per year or 20 million dollars probably and that 20 million could be put to such a good use they could maybe put it towards improving their engine which is famously unreliable they could put it towards I don't know improving their aero or their DRS or their chassis or any part of that car would benefit from that 20 million dollars or pounds or whatever that is going to be paid to Fernando Alonso instead. Moving back to the Renault Driver Academy, 
these drivers, as long as they are tied to this Renault Academy, they aren't able to go to any other F1 team because in the case of other academies, for instance, Ferrari, they have Alfa Romeo. So if Ferrari don't want this driver in their main team, maybe that driver will go to Alfa Romeo. In the case of Mercedes, it's Williams. In the case of Red Bull, it's Alfa Tauri. And for Renault, they are, in 2021 at least, they are going to be a standalone team because McLaren, who used to be kind of very loosely tied to them in the way that they use Renault engines, they're going to be taking Mercedes engines in 2021. And this will mean not only is Renault the only team that's using its own engines and not supplying them to anyone else, it's going to mean that Renault won't be able to offload some of their driver academy to another team. And this might not seem such a bad thing, because that means that the talent goes to Renault. However, Renault are insistent that the talent does not go to Renault. They're going for their Ricardos, the Alonsos, the Ocons, anyone they can find except their driver academy. And that's going to mean this talent is going to be stifled because they can't go to another F1 team and show what they can do. And they can't go to Renault because Renault just won't let them. So not not the best move. So to sum it up, do I think that Alonso going to Renault is a bad move or a good move? Now, I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence on this one. I think in terms of giving Renault good results, I think this is a good move. This is a going to bring some money into the team and you know, in terms of a short-term gain, Alonso may well be the right kind of driver to go for because in your Renault Academy drivers, they're still going to be finding their feet in 2021 if they were brought into F1. However, obviously, Alonso is a well-established racing driver, so he knows exactly what he's doing. And for that reason, Renault will be benefiting from that talent that he has. And the reason I think it's a bad move, as I've already said, Alonso is quite a negative person and he's not going to be bringing the best kind of atmosphere into the team, which for a midfield team could possibly be one of the worst things that could possibly happen to them. And yeah, for that reason, because we kind of got a balance of good and bad, if I was in Renault's position right now, I would probably stick with Alonso like many people had been speculating and obviously this speculation has been right. But if I was Renault looking into the future... I would definitely steer clear of Alonso and look more towards these academy drivers who are so talented and this driver academy deserves more recognition. So yeah, there you have it. That is my hot take, uh, hot off the press of this Renault situation that we have. I think Renault have monumentally dug their own grave here and Let's just hope they can dig their way out. Yeah.